Hi everyone, welcome back to Onco Daily. My name is Emma Terazerian, and today uh, we're going to talk about breast cancer, a disease that touches millions of lives each year. Joining me for this important conversation is Glendon Wiesner, Director of Scientific Strategy and Programs at Susan G. Common, an organization with deeply personal roots and a powerful mission to end breast cancer forever. Hi, Glendon. It's very nice to meet you. Hi, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my first question will be, to begin with, could you introduce Susan G. Common to our audience? Share a bit of its history, its mission, and the scope of the work it does. Absolutely. Yeah, Susan G. Komen is a breast cancer organization. It's been patient-centric for decades. Um, and as a patient advocacy organization that drives research, we are working at the intersection of science and advocacy, translating scientific strategy and patient insights into programs that will accelerate research discoveries that hopefully save lives. So our mission here, uh, really our vision for Komen is a world without breast cancer. And our mission is to save lives by meeting the most critical needs of our communities and investing in breakthrough research to prevent and cure breast cancer. In order to achieve that mission, we have two imperatives that we focus on. The first is con conquering aggressive and deadly breast cancers to help people live longer, better lives. And the second is to ensure that all people receive the care they need and achieve health equity. So one of the things that I'm most passionate about here about what Komen does as an organization is how they take a 360 degree approach to fighting breast cancer. So another way to think about this is our 360 degree approach is focused on a people centric style. Uh, that approach is And the way we deliver that is through research. We drive breakthroughs that will bring us new knowledge as well as advances in care for all, as well as community health to empower people with trustworthy information, also supporting the people in their breast health path through direct services, community programs, as well as health systems change. And finally, public policy, where we advocate for policies to create that systemic lasting change that will fund as well as facilitate research and alleviate the burden on patients in protecting access to, to affordable care and also high quality health care for all. So at the center of all of this work in our North Store Star for everything that we do, there are the millions of people who have been impacted by breast cancer. And at the end of the day, Komen is all about helping people with breast cancer live longer, better lives. So as we know, breast cancer is not a single disease. It includes different clinical and histologic types um, and can be diagnosed at various stages and carries different prognosis for each individual. What is Komen's focus in this complex landscape? Uh, do you work across the full spectrum of breast cancer? And could you highlight some of the key programs and initiatives? So Komen is uh, focused on investing in research and the future of breast cancer care. So through our extramural research grants programs, as well as Komen's led Komen led scientific programs, Uh, we are focusing on catalyzing discussions, moving the needle in key areas important to patients to advance progress. So to date, Komen's invested nearly $1.1 billion dollars in research funding in thousands of studies focused on conquering deadly breast cancer, as well as advancing precision care for all. So we fund across that full spectrum of research, and this includes basic science, population science, translational work, as well as nearly 600 investigator-initiated clinical studies that have been supported by Komen, and this includes oh, more than 70 through consortiums. So our research grants investment in discovery science has and will continue to lay the foundation for new breakthroughs in new drugs and devices. And I'm proud to say that Coleman has played a role in the development of 29 of the 30 drugs that are available to breast cancer patients today. So that supportive research 
throughout that continuum uh, is important. We've touched those drugs. We've made sure that those are available. And on top of that, this investment in research has supported over 2,300 investigators. And it's been a priority of Coleman's over the decades uh, to invest in that next generation of scientists, of researcher. We need their creative creativity, their commitment to breast cancer research. And therefore, we will continue to fund that next generation, those early career breast cancer researchers to drive new discoveries and hopefully lead to the next clinical trial. So in addition to investing in extramural work, Coleman's also leading some of the innovative programs that no one else is focused on to advance research and clinical care. Uh, We partner with industry as well as work with other organizations to create patient-centric studies. We also spark discussions about emerging and understudy areas to drive progress. So I'm really excited to share about the new evidence-based tools that Komen has created to advance patient care as well as research. I did want to share a couple examples real quickly. The first one is that IBC, the Inflammatory Breast Cancer Scoring System. Komen helped to lead, and it's a Komen-led group of experts and advocates who identified defining characteristics, including clinical, pathologic, as well as imaging features of IBC. And this led them to develop a quantitative scoring system for diagnosis. It was the IBC scoring system. It was designed for healthcare providers to identify inflammatory breast cancer. And it's intended to increase diagnostic accuracy, predict outcomes, as well as guide treatment decisions and inclusion for clinical trials. So to answer your question a bit more concisely, Yes, Komen works across the spectrum of breast cancer, and it helps to implement scientific projects, initiatives, and events to advance priority areas, including clinical trials, metastatic and aggressive breast cancers, breast cancer disparities, as well as big data. Recently, your work helped lead to a major update in the ICD coding system, giving inflammatory breast cancer, a particularly ag- aggressive form of the disease, its own classification in the International Classification of Diseases, 10th Revision, Clinical Modification. Can you explain what this change means, why it's so important, and how it will impact patients and healthcare providers? Sure. Um, So Komen-led advocacy efforts helped to secure three new ICD-10 CM codes. And as you mentioned, ICD-10 CM stands for International Classification of Disease, 10th Revision, Clinical Modification. These diagnostic diagnosis codes um, for inflammatory breast cancer, we requested this from the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. So these diagnostic codes will go into effect October 1st, 2025. And this their use will help to improve disease documentation support faster access to and more coordinated treatment, as well as help insurance claims go through with fewer delays. It will also help to improve the identification and collection of patient data to advance research. Could you walk us through the process of making this change happen? Was it a solo effort from Common or did it involve significant collaboration? And what were the biggest challenges along the way? Sure. Um, Well, this is a culmination of nearly a decade of leadership by Komen and our colleagues at the Inflammatory Breast Cancer Research Foundation and the Milburn Foundation. And it was set up to bring experts together to define IBC, increase diagnostic accuracy, as well as advocate for tools healthcare providers need to support patients who are diagnosed with inflammatory breast cancer or an uncommon form of breast cancer. It was the tireless effort of and tireless work of patients, advocates, clinicians, uh, researchers that brought critical attention to inflammatory breast cancer and allowed us to make some meaningful progress in research and treatment developments that are needed to save lives. It was in 2022, the IBC Collaborative announced the creation of the IBC 
scoring system, uh, as I mentioned a little previously. It was a first-of-its-kind type of system to help healthcare providers distinguish IBC from other forms of breast cancer. And it was set up to increase that diagnosis accuracy as well as guide treatment decisions. At that time, Komen invested 700000 in grants uh, funded in part by Komen's collaborative partners to fund world-renowned breast cancer researchers from two of the largest IB centers in the world, IBC centers in the world, to validate and optimize this IBC scoring system. It was then after that work that we were able to create in 2023 an online system that was made available. So it was an easy to use online system through Susan G. Coleman. And at to date, that system's now been accessed more than 5,700 times in more than 100 countries worldwide around the world. So it was really the availability of that scoring system and the tool that paved the way for the most recent Coleman-led advocacy efforts requesting the diagnostic codes be established for IBC. Looking ahead, what upcoming programs, research initiatives, or advocacy efforts can we expect from Common? Sure. Well, I'll stick with IBC for, for a minute here because I think it historically IBC hasn't been clearly or consistently defined in medical records. So it's with these new codes that the new codes for IBC should enable better disease of documentation. And through standardized coding of IBC, researchers can now more easily gather information on how co- common uh, inflammatory breast cancer is, who it affects, as well as how people respond to treatment. Ultimately, this should help them find ways to improve care. Uh, regarding next steps, the, the codes then can help more people be included in clinical trials, as well as other research opportunities. Uh, which could lead to new discoveries, new treatment options in the future. So that's one area where Coleman is going to be focused. We're going to look to advance the understandings of the biological underpinnings of inflammatory breast cancer. We need to advance research in this space. And with these codes being implemented, it should help with that. Later, this, and this is away from IBC, another area that we're excited about is a uh, later this fall, we'll be launching Assess. It's a web-based decision support tool that provides personalized five-year survival estimates for women with early-stage breast cancer. So this tool, referred to as Assess, uses an algorithm developed in collaboration with experts in the field using the U.S.-based SEER data to estimate outcomes for different systemic adjuvant therapies based on an individual's clinical and pathological characteristics. Another tool for healthcare providers is to help them discuss treatment options with their patients and inform treatment decisions. Thank you. And finally, uh, on a personal note, could you recommend a book to read or maybe a movie to watch that you believe would be meaningful or inspiring for breast cancer patients and their loved ones? Hmm. Well, um, I think sharing of information with loved ones when diagnosed with any illness can be difficult. So I, I would recommend Love Stays Strong. It'll be a book published by, uh, it'll be a book by author Paula Schneider. It's a book about the strength of the family's love, especially during times of illness, by a, a breast cancer survivor uh, and president and CEO of Susan G. Komen. But Paula wrote the book based on her own experiences and she and her fam- what she and her family went through when she received her diagnosis. The book is not focused on breast cancer, but more on illness. When diagnosed with an illness, how do you share that? So this book is about a mother telling her child about her illness. And no matter what happens, love stays strong. Thank you. Uh, it was a really honor and pleasure for me to talk to you today, Glenn. And thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity. It was a pleasure of mine as well. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.